Hej och välkommen William Engdahl till White TV här i Stockholm. Hej då. <laughs> Tack så mycket. <laughs> It's a, a huge honor that we get an interview with you. And uh, could you please uh, start to explain why you have come to Sweden? Uh, I came on the invitation of my Swedish publisher for the launch of, of my book, the, the Seeds of Destruction, the Hidden Agenda of Genetic Manipulation, in Swedish language. Hot it, mot, leave it. And I'm making a speaking tour around the book. Yes. And uh, what is your message? The message is, uh, and the book goes into this in, in great detail, but if we think back 20 or 30 years to the quality of food that was normal on the family dinner table, in Sweden, I was here, I lived here in the, in the 1970s, uh, in Germany where I live now, in the United States uh, most extremely, we're not feeding our families food anymore in the real sense of nutrition, we're feeding them fake food, industrialized products that are produced by something called agribusiness, cartel concentrations of, of uh, production of things resembling food. And some years ago I was commissioned by a publisher in, in uh, Europe to research the subject of genetic manipulation of, of plants. And as I dug deeper I realized that the same family that was behind uh, so many uh, wicked things, let's say, in the, in the post-World War II era, the Rockefeller family, was the inspiring financial uh, driver behind the idea of patenting seeds, seeds of life, of all varieties. And that really made me curious because of my earlier work on the Rockefellers in connection with oil, my book, uh, uh, The Century of War. Yes. And uh, we heard recently that Russia uh, has an uh, attitude against uh, genetically manipulated uh, mm, GMOs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This uh, I was very happy to to uh, read the comments of, of Prime Minister Medvedev and, and President Putin some some days ago about the uh, ban on imports of GMO products in Russia. Uh, whether this is a response to U.S. sanctions and EU sanctions uh, against Russia for the Crimea uh, annexation or not is unimportant. The important thing is that they drew a line and said no more GMO in Russia. I've been to Russia many times. The seeds book of mine has been translated into Russian language and it's uh, uh, had an influence on, on the debate in that country in the media as well as uh, among academics. Uh, and the fact that they're finally acting on this, uh, I find a very positive step. Yes, me too. And the European Union had different uh, <laughs> attitudes. It is like a way of going forth and back. Yes. Well, the, uh, we have to differentiate. The European Commission in Brussels is probably next to the Congress of the United States today, probably the second most corrupt body of politicians in uh, in the world. Yes, I agree. <laughs> uh, they are in bed with something called the EFSA, European Food Safety Administration, who is charged with the food safety uh, of, of the European citizenry. And EFSA is the EFSA GMO uh, scientist body, uh, task force, has direct ties to Monsanto and the GMO cartel, the GMO industry. They have lied, they have uh, faked data, they have done uh, unconscionable things, criminal things, if it were to be uh, recognized for what it is, on the health and safety of citizens in Europe on GMO. Not the population, though. The population in the EU is overwhelmingly against GMO, and rightly so. Yes. What are the big dangers with GMO? There are several things. One, I think if even if GMO did solve the problem of world harvest yield and world hunger in the next 20-30 years, which it doesn't. Even if it did mean dramatically reduced chemical usage on plants, which it doesn't. It means the opposite in both cases over time. I would be opposed to the patenting of plants by three or four giant multinational chemical co companies, Monsanto originally and still today is a chemical company, DuPont, Dow Chemical, 
and Syngenta in Switzerland for the very reason that if you have patents on these seeds and terminator technology, genetic use restriction technologies, that the seed commits suicide after one harvest, farmers in China, farmers in India, farmers in the United States, farmers in Sweden are essentially in a state of neo-serfdom like the Russian serfs uh, of bizarre times where they are forced to do whatever Monsanto tells it to do. If Monsanto doubles the price of corn seeds from Monsanto each year or they triple the price of uh, uh, wheat seeds and so forth, GMO seeds, the farmer has no choice. He's locked in. He's trapped, as is the case with American farmers today. Yes. And I heard that there is a risk that uh, there is also a genetic change in the human body triggered by the GMO food. Well, the difficulty is we don't, nobody really knows because in 1992 George W. Bush Sr., Papa Bush, met with Monsanto at the White House and issued a ruling or a decree, presidential decree, to all of his government agencies, Food and Drug Administration, U.S. Department of Agriculture, National Institutes of Health, and so forth. There will be no independent U.S. government testing of the health and safety of GMO. It's called the Doctrine of Substantial Equivalence, which is a legal nonsense term if you deconstruct it. Substantial means roughly, and equivalence means one-to-one, 100% -one, match. Well, it means it's uh, neither nor. So uh, through that doctrine, they have forbidden any independent government tests on the health and safety in the U.S., only relying on the tests that Monsanto or Dow or whoever gives to them. And those tests are, have been exposed to be doctored evidence. They throw out uh, embarrassing research results on rats and so forth, and they do them far, far too short, the three-month, 90-day tests when cancer tumors appear in uh, longer term studies only after four, five, six months. Yes. So. yes. That's a really, really problem. And the FDA is not honest. Um, that's a real problem. Well, the, it, 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 it even gets worse because the FDA today under every president since George W. Bush Sr. has uh, been an agent for the interests of Monsanto and the export of GMO in the world, including Barack Obama. Obama appointed Michael Taylor, the former vice president of Monsanto, as the key man inside the FDA today, determining government policy on GMO. So you have a little idea of the revolving door corruption there. What are your advices? What can we do about it? Well, I think a massive transformation in, in uh, the awareness of, of the world, really, took place a year ago when a lone housewife in Idaho, I believe it was, got so upset when she read that Monsanto and company had spent tens of millions of dollars to defeat the California referendum to label GMO products, and also in Washington the same, Washington State, that she started a Facebook. She was alone, a mother, had children, and she wanted to care for their uh, health and well-being like any good mother should. She started a Facebook called March Against Monsanto and named a date in May of 2013 for spontaneous protests against Monsanto. Well, she had no idea that that would go viral in the Internet. It did. There were 52 countries where there were marches against Monsanto. It wasn't controlled by NGOs. This was spontaneous. Yes. These were people who never thought about demonstrating yeah. before, and they, uh, it, it shook the GMO mafia to the roots, uh, in my view. So yes. there's many things that can be done. Were I a government, I would ban all, re all uh, uh, open commercialization of GMOs instantly, as the European Union should have done when the Seralini study was made public in, I believe it was September 2012, on the effects over a two-year period of rats fed with GMO corn from Monsanto. Cancer tumors, death rates that are five times what they are for non-GMO rats and, and so forth. Um, I have made a lot of research in transhumanism because I am very uh, fond of the mind control problem and I see a connection to transhumanism. Uh, that means that uh, they want to develop a human which is half human, half robot, and therefore they have to change the genes. 
And mm. do you see some connection with GMO there? The problem with GMO from scientists, uh, experts that I've spoken with over the years, is that it's not stable. It is not a stable. It's uh, the GMO switch is always switched on, and it can go through metamorphoses that we have no idea of over time. So, mm -hmm. fortunately for the human race, I think uh, this kind of a tinkering around with the genetic structures is uh, not possible, or extremely, extremely remotely possible. Uh, I know that there are all sorts of ghastly experiments being done by various government intelligence agencies, biological warfare agencies, and such. Uh, my feeling is that that's uh, unlikely to work. Not to say that they're not trying this, but uh, I don't think that's... Uh, if you talk about creating zombies, half human, half zombie, in effect, what we have in, in, uh, in the West, certainly today, where we vaccinate with 8 to, to uh, 11 or 12 different vaccines, infant newborn, and tell them that's going to uh, prevent them from uh, catching any harmful diseases, uh, where we vaccinate in a country like India and uh, something like 55,000 cases of polio to the vaccinated polio vaccine uh, victims appear after the vaccination. Uh, the illnesses, the, the uh, destructive food that is on the daily diet with, with uh, corn gluten, with aspartame and Coke Zero, or uh, these hundreds of thousands of destructive things that we take in, uh, we almost have that state where we're half human and half zombie today. And I think that's not accidental. Yes, that's right. They're fully aware of what they're doing with our food yes, and with our yes, 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 uh, yes. health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I say they, I mean powerful, extremely wealthy people who make decisions like gods over, over mankind. Yes. Uh, do you like the expression, the Illuminati? Well, it's an historical expression that goes back to Adam Weishaupt uh, in Germany. I don't uh, care for it myself in terms of describing any of this because I don't think they're very illuminated. I think they're <laughs> rather stupid people, uh, but uh, they're very powerful people. So yes. I'd rather call uh, talk about the very powerful. Yes, or, or the, the banksters in my eyes because it's always tied to huge money. Yes. And, 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 and we have a Ponzi scheme, a pyramid game in, in the banking system, and those being on the top of this banking pyramid are, are behind all, all the awful things. Mm -hmm. This is my research. Uh, yeah, would you finally uh, want to add something to this GMO topic and your book on that? Well, I think the, the most important point that I bring out uh, in the book, and I, I've seen it in no other place, and it's everything since the book was published six years ago in its original edition, and now it's uh, updated in a new edition in Swedish and also in German, is that the ultimate agenda of GMO, and I document this in great detail in the book, is eugenics. Mm -hmm. Killing off the inferior races as these very, very wealthy, very powerful people see it, and creating the so-called master race. It's a lame-brained lunatic project. It's based on a fallacy called scientific reductionism, that you can reduce the complexity of life to a single gene and play around with that gene like a, like a god. And that just doesn't work. But uh, the ultimate agenda of this is eugenics. It's a, the new word for eugenics. It was declared after World War II, and Auschwitz and uh, uh, Dachau and the various uh, extermination projects of the Nazis were uncovered. The uh, new name for eugenics, they proclaimed, was genetics, human genome project. Mm -hmm. Nazi doctors were brought in on that. It's, Mengele, it's, yeah. Now, and, uh, uh, and GMO is a prime example. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.